Welcome back, friends, to the shop. So you guys came through for me. 15,000 thumbs up on the last sawmilling video. That means I owe you a video, and that is we're going to be attempting to mill uh, with an electric chainsaw today. I've never seen this done before. I don't know how it's going to do. As we know, electric chainsaws are a whole different kettle of fish than our gas ones. So it's going to be interesting to find out. My subscriber at Super Subscriber and member Carl, Carl Zerk, said, better get some batteries ready. And I have. I've got three massive batteries here. I'm thinking that it's going to get through there on one battery, but we will find out. Just to give you an idea how big these batteries are, this is a normal DeWalt Makita 18 or 20 volt, is it 20 volt? 20 volt, same as an 18 normal drill battery, impact battery. This is the chainsaw battery. So you can see they are absolutely massive. The saw we'll be using today, of course, is DeWalt's biggest, baddest <laughs> electric saw. Um, I'm, I'm kind of becoming a convert to these just for the convenience of them, not having to deal with mixing the gas and oil, uh, the noise, uh, starting and stopping it. It it's really has been kind of a go-to saw for us, and they're incredibly powerful. We're still stuck with the oil, so we still have uh, a potential for spilling stuff all over the shop. If you're a new subscriber to the channel and just joining us, I'll catch you up to speed. What we're doing is, uh, is we've been milling these big beans beams or, or we've been milling uh, dimensional lumber off of these beams using different saws and stuff uh, using this simple jig system that mounts to the saw uh, and just runs down here and gives you the ability to cut your own lumber from your own trees. Uh, one question that came up by a bunch of you guys and which was a good question is what happens when you start getting to the end of the board? You know imagine that we're cutting two inches off here and two inches off of here and then we get to the end and it's so little that there's nothing left uh, to mount to uh, for the blade. Um, so I, I saw, or the, uh, for the jig, I thought about that, uh, and here's what I would, what I would do. Um, uh, let's say we cut one more off of here, and now it's narrow, it's even narrower than our, than our guide board. What I would probably do is I would, uh, take a four by out of the last one. So I would move the board over here, and I would make a thin cut of the waste. So just whatever's left over. So if I measured four inches here and there was like an inch and a quarter left over, I would flip over it, I would cut this side and just take a four by out of it. Each time I use this timber tough jig, I learn a new trick here. Let me show you a quick and real easy way to do layout. So let's say we're gonna cut two bys, right? We know that we need to have an inch extra uh, for the width of the saw. So you just measure, basically measure three inches. So I measure three inches and that's, that's exactly where the, where the guide goes. The setup, of course, would be exactly the same as the gas saws. What I found to work really good is, is just to put it right there on your sawhorse. We've got uh, our three set screws here. This is the two by that we cut last time uh, with the gas saw. We'll sit that over here and we'll do a comparison between the two. Please pardon the interruption, but I do have some free giveaway for you guys. I'm sorry I was supposed to do this a couple weeks ago. I'm so behind from Christmas and New Year's. I'm sitting on about 1,250 emails. Um, that I haven't even responded to yet that I've got to try to work through. So let's do this today. The good folks over at Timberline who make this beautiful little sharpener that I have been using exclusively on all of the saw milling um, have offered to give away six of these complete units to you guys. Comment in this video. If you just comment, I'll use the randomizer and I will select one and we'll get those sent out to you. The whole package, everything you need to sharpen your saw. So that's, that's over a hundred dollar value and this is a great little saw. So if you've struggled with it in the past, comment and there's a good chance you win because most people don't. So um, I'll announce that here coming up. Something else that might be interesting is it is currently 14 degrees. These batteries are in 14 degree temperature. And we've been told that lithium doesn't handle cold weather well, right? So uh, how much is that going to come into play? Uh, we don't know. But let's, uh, let's see. Here we go.
Here is something that's very odd indeed. This is the board that was cut by the electric chainsaw. And if you look at this, it is exceedingly uh, uh, jagged, rugged, like uh, the, the, it was bouncing all over the place. Uh, a lot of work, it's gonna take a lot of work to plane that out. That does not look nice. We got deep, deep gouges, you know, that are gonna basically, you know, take away a lot of this wood versus this one here that we cut previously with a cheap chainsaw, but gas. This was the cheapest saw on Amazon with a junky Chinese uh, chain uh, that I sharpened. It, even with that, with the worst of all chainsaws and the worst of all chainsaw chains, we have a, a, actually a pretty nice, easy, planable surface right there uh, that's gonna lend itself to, you know, nicely to the next project. This here, uh, that is not nice at all. That's an incredible mystery. Why would that happen? When I first saw that, I thought initially that, well, the chain must be loose and the chain was jumping around, uh, flopping around, but that was not the case at all. Uh, I pulled it off just like this and the chain uh, is good and tight. I think what it is, and, and I've talked about this in the past with these electric saws, is that they're very, um, they're rough. They're not refined and they're not smooth and they jump all over the place. And I don't know what it is. If it's just that the torque is just so intense and just so constant that it, um, it's just kind of the nature of it. How much battery did it take to cut that? Now that's impressive. That's a 12 foot board that we ripped. That takes a lot of power. And this was the, the, the original battery. And we're still, we still have two bars left there. And that's in 14 degree weather, where lithium is supposed to completely fall down. Here's a close up on that two by cut with the electric saw. Look how ragged and jagged and deep all of those cut marks in there. All right guys, so what did we learn here? Well, we learned that you can mill just fine with an electric chainsaw. It's pretty impressive what's what they're able to do with the lithium batteries. I, I, you know, I've really wanted to dismiss the electric saws, but no matter, I mean, they've actually wormed their way into our life and we use them as much as, if not more than, than the gas saws, just for the convenience of it. It was really nice to be, if you had to mill inside your garage or inside of an area that's kind of confined like this, not to have to subject yourself to all of the exhaust fumes. Uh, that was a nice part of it. It's not as noisy. Also, when you want to take a break and stop, because it's, it's quite strenuous to push a chainsaw ripping through heavy timber like this, you get kind of tired and you need to sometimes change positions just to mix it up a little bit not having the vibrating gas saw that you have to take down, you can just basically let go of the electric one, reposition into a more comfortable spot and then continue on. So that's really nice. What I don't understand and what is a problem is, is all that chattering and all that vibration. Um, so I don't know what's causing that, but I think that the saws are gonna, they're going to get more refined. You know, electric lithium chainsaws are pretty new. I would be very excited and I would be totally on board to support a professional grade electric saw it doesn't have to be a big monster and it doesn't have to be, you know, designed to run all day long. But if a guy can go out and if you can cut for an hour on a battery or so, man, that's great. And if you only have to have an extra one and to be able to have the charge time uh, fast enough that when one was done that you could slot the other one in, um, man, that's a great, it's a great deal. They're just not there yet. You know, they're built down to a budget. I haven't used all of them, so I probably shouldn't be commenting on things that I don't understand. I've only had a pretty small sample size, but there's a lot of plastic in them. And I just noticed when really pushing hard on the mill, the whole saw is flexing and, you know, so how long are they gonna last? You know, I don't know. Um, and they're not super cheap. So it's not like they're a fourth the price of an equivalent gas saw. I mean, really apples to apples, they're pretty good. You could go for the same price, you could go buy a good Husky or a still like a prosumer brands type of saw um, that's gonna be, you know, it's just gonna last longer. But, you know, we convenience, you know, it comes down to convenience and where sometimes that's, that's a good fit. Uh, and there's a lot, of, you know, there's a perfect example. The neighbor came over and, and she was asking about saws and chainsaws and stuff. And her biggest gripe uh, was that she couldn't start the thing, you know, just, just, and it's not necessarily, it's not just because she's small and she's a woman and she's weaker than, you know, than a lot of head, bigger guys are going to be using them. There's a lot of technique to it, uh, just the way you snap it and such. And so that's a barrier for folks. That's a problem. Um, so to have something that's electric would be, you know, I, I showed her this one and she was really interested in it and I, she'll probably go buy one. One more thing I nearly forgot. Now I've done some serious upgrades to some of the homestead tools that I'm not able to share with you on YouTube. If you'd like to see a little show and tell, and I think you would, head over to unauthorized TV forward slash Wrangler Star. I'll put a link down below. 
uh, for exclusive content. We're going to go a tip to tail. Um, I think you're going to want to see it. So come on over there. You don't have to buy a membership. Uh, you can if you want to support the channel, support uh, the creators on Unauthorized. You can watch for free. Uh, it's just a place that we can put content that is not allowed uh, any longer on YouTube. So head on over to Unauthorized after watching this. We'll see you over there. I think you'll, uh, I think you'll enjoy it.